Okay, welcome back. This is lab exercise number one of our little mini ARP class. I call this one ARP on your own machine, and you can follow along with me on your local machine. You should be able to copy almost every command because I'm not going to do very many, but the point will be clear about being able to look at your ARP cache and work with the ARP cache. All right, so let's just jump right in here. I'm going to minimize my slides. Now, on a Windows machine, what you need to do is you need to click on the Windows button or the Start button. Mine is in the top left. Yours might be in the lower left. And then you want to type CMD. CMD. And you should get a command prompt app if you're running Windows 10. You might have to type CMD and then hit Enter to actually run it. If you do this, you're going to get a command line prompt, basically a terminal window that lands in your user directory. And this is actually not what we need. You can do just the view commands, if you will, just to view your ARP cache, but you can't modify it without uh, elevated privileges. And if you're running uh, Linux or Windows, this means you'd have to use the sudo command in your terminal, okay? So I'm gonna close this actually and do it again. So CMD, and you can see this is what I typed. Again, it has found the command prompt. This time I'm going to right click on the command prompt and say run as administrator. Okay, I will get a little prompt. I have to click yes. And then I get this nice command line window that you can see goes to system 32. If you've landed in this spot on Windows, then you are in the right place and you're running as administrator. So you have elevated privileges. Again, on the other machines, just type sudo in front of these commands uh, to get them to work. All right. So the program that we're going to use is the ARP program. Okay, and we can say ARP and then space minus help or tack help for help and if you hit enter you're going to get the little man page on the arp command you can see if we had uh, issued arp with these different things we could do various queries and settings and so forth so there's good examples here uh, there's also some examples at the bottom the two that we're going to do, we're going to do the tack A or minus A command. This is just a way to display your ARP cache. And we're going to do the minus D command, which is the way to clear your cache um, and let it sort of rebuild. All right, so we're going to do both of those things uh, very simply here. So let's clear the screen. You do this on Windows with CLS. It means clear screen. And uh, in Mac and Linux, you just type clear in your terminal. It will clear it. Okay, so let's now do the ARP space minus A or TAC A to display the ARP cache. Okay, so this is my current ARP cache. And you can see it's done by interface. So there are multiple interfaces on my machine. There's a wireless interface, there's an Ethernet interface, and then there's a, a, another interface for the virtual machines and so forth. The only one that I'm really using is this one up here. This happens to be my Ethernet interface. Now you can see there are two different types of entries here. There are static entries right here. Okay, these represent either multicast or broadcast addresses that the operating system is setting in here statically. Okay, so just even with a reboot, these will be added to your cache depending on what you're doing. The dynamic entries are the ones that have been learned through the ARP request reply process. So these are currently valid addresses in the cache. Now you can see there's no display here for timers or anything else like that, but these will eventually clear out of the cache. Now, what if I'm looking for something that's not here? Like, um, let's say I try to ping, let's try to ping uh, 192.168.1. Dot .253. Let's see if there's a device on my network with this. Now you might have to pick a different device on your network, but you can see that I am getting ping responses from here, but that 253 was nowhere in my cache. So now let's clear the screen again and do an ARP TAC A again. 
and you can see, ah, look, there it is, right? So we dynamically learned that address as a function of doing the ping test, right? Echo request, echo reply. And, and now that has been added to my cache. So the more things I ping, of course, the more things that would show up here if they indeed exist. Sometimes people lose track of like, you know, they can't talk to their printer. And, and one way to, to verify this is to look in the ARP cache. Like, do we have the IP address of the printer in there? Can we ping it? Um, does it respond to ARP? If the answer is no, then something's wrong, right? That printer is either offline, it doesn't believe it's online, or we've lost connectivity with that part of the network or something. So this is just a very basic connectivity test. Now, what I'm going to do is clear this cache. And the way that we do that is we say ARP TAC D star, okay? Which means delete everything, okay? Now, uh, maybe I typed it wrong. Let's try it again. ARP D space. Yeah, let's try it again. Oh, it seemed to work that time. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. However, what we've done here is we have now deleted everything. So let's clear the screen and do an ARP TAC A again. And you can see I'm down, right? I'm down to just a couple of dynamic addresses, a couple of static addresses. So uh, there is stuff running in the background on my machine. So that's why those dynamics already appeared. But basically what's happened is my ARP cache has been cleaned out. Uh, so now if I, again, if I go to ping 192.168.1.253, we should see that the pings work. And if I look once again at my ARP table, 253 should now appear. There it is. Okay. So you've learned two things here. You've learned how to look at your ARP table. The same command can be used on either Windows or Mac OS or your Linux machine. Uh, you've also seen how you can clear that. You can also, with attack S, you could add things, right, statically into the table. That's basically what your machine does when it adds those, those static entries. So you can do that. I usually don't do that, but uh, for some things that you need to communicate with right away, you might need to do that. So hopefully that's interesting to you. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next demonstration.